You know, everybody has their own way of navigating and their own process in working. Today I'm going to show you my way of navigating in Rhino 3D. So my philosophy behind navigating and moving around in the 3D environment is very similar to that of a traditional sculptor because that's my background. I believe in looking at an item in detail from all different angles 10 times before putting down a mark. So to get back into Rhino, what I do is I usually double click on perspective and I'm in a full view all of the time instead of having the four views. To move around in Rhino, right mouse drag down, start from the center, start holding your mouse, right mouse key down and drag from the center left to right, you're pretty much walking around the center of wherever you are. I could be here, if I write my mouse drag, I'm moving around this invisible center of where my mouse first dropped that click. Now orbiting, this right mouse drag up and down allows you to look up and down. Now shift will allow you to pan and frame your view like this. Command. If you right mouse drag, if you hold command down first, right mouse drag up, you're zooming in, command down, right mouse drag down, you're zooming out. So once again, that's right mouse drag orbit starting always from the center. If you go left and right, you're in a very controlled view of going around an object like you're walking on a plane. Up and down allows you to look up and down. Shift, holding down Shift first and then right mouse drag allows you to pan on frame. And then holding down Command and then right mouse drag up allows you to zoom out in. And then if you drag out, it zoom out. All right. So when I want to look up, look down, sorry, from above, I don't actually just navigate and still be in perspective. I want to make sure that I'm in the top view. So on a day-to-day -day basis when I'm working in Rhino, I am toggling the different views very fast all the time like this so that I can be as controlled as possible with what I'm looking at. How am I doing this? Instead of going Set, View, World, which is W, and then what do I want? Let's just say Front, so F, like that. I'm going EE -E for front, the same thing. What I'm doing is having my short keys set to these views. If you go to Rhino Preferences and Aliases, you can see that TT is perspective. So it's exclamation mark, underscore, capital P. And you can add your short keys this way, or you can add a text file. I will have a link of my short keys in, below in the description of the video. So as you can see, this is another view that I've used, WW for top. I've also used RR for right and EE for front. In another video where I'm explaining how to move, I'll be talking about the grid planes. When I'm in a front and I go back to perspective, my grid plane locks in still in a front view. This is as if I went to C plane, world, which is W, and then F. Rhino thinks that what we want is to be in a view like front, and then even when we are in perspective, nothing changes 
our front grid is still oriented towards our object, which makes perfect sense, but a lot of times that's not what we want. So I have short keys to of these grid variations. Once again, that's I'm typing in C plane, W for world, and then maybe right for top if that's what I want. I have these set already as different short keys, just like I just showed you in Rhino. Preferences, aliases. And what I wrote for those are REE for C plane world front. REW, C plane world right, and then RW for C plane world bottom. Now I'm going to pull up some items that I had hit before. Actually, I forgot to put items in there, so I'm going to put some items in there now. I'm just going to pick and choose from in here some items. I'm just doing a simple copy and paste. Now Rhino has a very default way of allowing you to navigate around the item. Actually, first I'm going to go to View, Shaded, so that I can see these easier. See these 3D shapes easier. I already know that they're 3D shapes. Oh, no magic powers or anything, sorry. So right now when I orbit, I'm having kind of a tough time. When I start from the sun, from this item, I'm navigating around. I'm navigating at a very wide angle as opposed to really having full control of rotating around this object. And this is because there's so many other objects that Rhino takes the account for. How Rhino thinks of the environment is that we are a camera. And the camera is set to different default settings. So we need to change those settings in order to actually get what we want. But the first thing I want you to know is that if we just select these items and then hide them, CEA is zoom to extents and that's the short key to frame your item. Now if it's only one item, I can navigate very easily like this. Now I'm going to show this item, and now I'm going to do the same thing. And I still have the nice view because, I still have the nice angle because Rhino remembers those views. Let's see if it remembers them anymore when I'm in a different view and I come back. Yep, I think it remembers that them still. But it's relatively hard to be in an environment like this. I was just navigating around that object. So now when I'm all the way on this side of the 3D environment, it's slightly harder to navigate around this item. If you ever have problems like this where you want to navigate one item and it feels particularly difficult, what you want to do is go to view, set camera, place target. This, what it, this is doing is that we're placing a focus point. So I want to focus on this point now. So I clicked on that point and now when I'm orbiting, I'm always orbiting oriented to that axis. It's so much easier to look at this point now this general area. There's no point. So if I want to zoom in, sometimes I want to zoom in further but it gets increasingly harder and harder to zoom in. I feel like I can't zoom in anymore. The way to fix that is to type in viewport properties like this or we could just go to view. Um, it's in here somewhere too but it's just so easier to type this in. Viewport properties. Now for the lens lens, we can set this to up to 10,000 like that. Press enter. Now I'm going to zoom out a little bit. And now you can see I can zoom in a lot more. There's still a limit, but it's easier.
to zoom in. And because my lens lens length has changed, the way the way in which I view items in terms of how they look like in perspective has changed as well, just to be aware. And it gets increasingly harder to really navigate around these objects. So once again, it's going to view, set camera, place target, and then oh, make sure that you can snap to your object. So I always have these object snaps on, and it's so easy for me now to snap to an object. So I just snap to here, so now it's a lot easier for me to move around that point. And like I said, if I want to go to top, if I go to front, if I go to, want to go to right, it's that easy because of my short keys. And then CEA, the zoom extends, and I can frame all the objects that I've, I, have, I have in front of me. In a situation like this, I would drag select the items I don't need. I'm going to hide them. Another thing I'm going to do is just select the item I want and then type in invert hide. Now when I do ZEA, I can see the object really well and navigate around it really well. 